This might not be the prettiest video in the world, but hopefully it can explain assigning potential drops and current directions very succinctly. When you're assigning a potential drop across a passive device, and for this instance, uh, an RL or a C, which we can just represent in the generic case as an impedance Z, the positive part or the higher potential is put at the entrance to the device. And the negative or the lower potential is put at an exit. How do you tell the difference between the entrance and the exit? The entrance is where the current enters in. It's the beginning of the line. And the exit is where the arrow is. So in this case, the current I flowing through this impedance, I have this as the direction, that's the entrance, that's the exit, higher potential, lower potential. Vz is measured that way, and we have Ohm's law. Now I have the current going the other direction. The entrance is now here, that's the higher potential, exit the device, negative, lower potential, Vz is measured this way, and Vz equals Iz. Have the current going down. Entrance, exit, high potential, low potential. V still equals IZ. And for sake of completion, I have the current going up. Entrance, exit, plus, minus. Now, that's pretty easy. In a complex circuit, you can assign arbitrary current directions as long as the positive or the higher potential is put on the entrance and the negative is put on the exit. If you reverse that, well, then you're going to get the wrong answer. So let's just take an example that you could probably do in your head. Um, you know, the total current would be the voltage divided by the sum of those three resistors. But let's do a nodal analysis. Okay, this is the reference node, that is the battery, the, so there's really only two nodes we need to solve for. Now normally we would have put the currents all going from left to right, but I decided to flip this one. So let's just double check. Current starts here, ends here, plus minus. Current starts here, ends there, plus minus. Starts here, ends there, plus minus. Well, let's write the KCL, all right? At node A, both currents are going into the node, so I1 plus I2 equals zero. At node B, both currents are leaving. I2 plus I3 equals zero. How do we calculate I1? I1 is the high potential node minus the low potential node divided by R1. Plus minus. And in this case, it's Vn minus Va divided by Rn, as you would expect. I2, high, high potential node minus low potential node divided by R2. And in this case, it's Vb minus Va. Because the positive sign is there, Vb, the negative sign is there. High, low. I3, high potential minus low potential. Vb minus ground divided by R3 is Vb divided by R3, right? You can put equation 3 and 4 into 1 and solve. And you get this. And you can see that the voltage source in R1, you know, the source transformation just happens automatically. 4 and 5 into 2, do some algebra, I get equation 9. And then I put it into matrix form so that we can compare it to another form rather than actually solve it. So what if we change some current directions? Now I have everything going from right to left, right to left, right to left. Right? Traditionally we would have gone left to right, left to right, left to right because that's a higher potential. But Notice I have the higher potential plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So let's do node A. This time I1 equals I2 because 
I2 is coming into the node, I1 is leaving the node. I2 equals I3 because I3 is entering and I2 is leaving. Well, when you start plugging these equations into each other, all right, and I'll just show it there for a second. Lo and behold, we get the same matrix. That's because it's the same answer. So the important thing is whenever you're assigning current directions, right, in a nodal analysis problem, yeah, put in the nodes. Give them names. In, ground, reference node, A, B, right? Assign current directions, and yeah, it can help to, to think about which way it's going to physically go, but don't get blindsided by it. Wherever the potential drop flow is, it's got to be positive on the entrance and negative on the exit, because that's the flow, right? Heat flows from hot to cold, right? So without a hot to cold, there can't be any flow of energy from hot to cold. It's the same thing. Right, now, yeah, if we were to calculate some things, yeah, we would find out that the real current direction is of defined as the flow of positive charge is going th and, and that way. But um, with this simple thing, you should be able to set up any problem and uh, get the correct solution as long as there's no algebraic errors.